What's up? Today, thyroid disease. Thyroid disease falls between general surgery and ear, nose, and throat. Personally, I think we do it better, but I'm a general surgeon, so you probably wouldn't, shouldn't ask me whether I'm better than somebody else. As far as how these patients present, that's a little different. It depends on what they're coming to us for. The majority of the patients end up in our office because they have a mass in their thyroid. Usually a 45 year old female comes in difficulty swallowing and she has two nodules in her thyroid. One is 1.4 centimeters in size and the other is three centimeters in size. The reason I put two nodules in there is because they both have two different issues. The number that we use to biopsy a lesion now is a bi is a 1.5 centimeters. If a nodule is greater than 1.5 centimeters, it needs to be biopsied. If it's 1.4, you can repeat an ultrasound in six months. This is all based on the fact that pretty much no one dies of thyroid cancer. Unless it's anaplastic or medullary, those are completely different. We'll get into those a little bit. Probably what we'll do in this lecture is when we do parathyroid and talk about surgery, we'll just kind of list a few of the types of thyroid cancer so that you kind of understand exactly what we're dealing with from that standpoint. As far as those nodules, we'll separate it out into two patients. So one patient has a 3.2 centimeter nodule, the other one has a 1.4. The 1.4, you can look at it and say, hey, it's 1.4 centimeters in size in all directions, repeating ultrasound, six months, see if it grows. If it grows, we'll biopsy it. If it doesn't, we'll watch it. Now, the patient with the 3.2 centimeters nodule, it needs to be biopsied, sort of. If someone is having symptoms from a nodule in their thyroid, difficulty swallowing, you can see a lump in their necks cosmetically, anything like that, that's an indication for surgery. So some of those patients, instead of doing a biopsy and they're symptomatic, we take them straight to the operating room, sort of straight, and take out that lobe of the thyroid. If it turns out to be cancer, then we do a total thyroidectomy. Another option is to do a biopsy of it. 3.2 centimeter nodule, do a biopsy of it, it comes back normal. You have the option to watch it, but you're watching it if it's asymptomatic. If they're having difficulty swallowing, you're still gonna take it out. So that's why I said you sometimes biopsy those. Now, the focus of this talk is really gonna talk about two diseases, hyperthyroidism and hypothyroidism. We're going to talk about that with surgery in the background, and the main reason is before you stick a needle in either one of those patients' necks, you have to know if they are hyperthyroid or hypothyroid. If you're gonna take one of those patients to the operating room, you have to know if they're hyperthyroid or hypothyroid. So you have to under understand the disease from that standpoint. But this is usually managed by the primary medical doctors or the internal medicine or family medicine. But let's talk about it. Thyroid, hypo-hyperthyroid nodule. Underactive thyroid, your body is trying to stimulate you to produce, produce more thyroid hormone, so your TSH is high because it's trying to stimulate it. Uh, thyroid is stimulating hormone, but your T4 is low. In hyper, your TSH is high because the gland itself is auto-stimulating itself, and you have a T4, T3, or you have adenoma or something like that. Thyroid nodule, abnormal tissue. Thyroid can have a nodule in it, and it can still be considered normal it really goes down to size. Now, patients with hypothyroidism present with, if you, had to, have, if you had to explain it, I would say a slowing down of your body processes. Your thyroid is a big regulator in your overall metabolic state. So if you are hypothyroid, you have slowed down metabolism, fatigue, cold intolerance, constipation, weight gain, coarse hair and nails. Again, everything is slowing down. 
Diagnosis again, elevated TSH, T4 is low. Um, you can sometimes have an elevated TPO antibodies. The treatment for hypothyroidism is giving synthetic thyroid hormone, levothyroxone or synthroid. Um, you can start people around 100 micrograms 20, or 50 micrograms, but it's a microgram dose, not a, not a milligram dose. And sometimes this is regulated by symptoms. So if you're at 100 micrograms, we start you there and you start having hot intolerance, heat intolerance, or you start losing a significant amount of weight, we're too high and we have to back it down, but we always get labs to confirm. These patients are not as big of an issue if you have to biopsy them, but before you go to surgery, before you have them under general anesthesia, you need them to be euthyroid, which means normal thyroid levels before we do anything with them. Versus the opposite, hyperthyroidism. Again, these patients are revved up, so they have palpitations, anxiety, heat intolerance, tremors, weight loss, thinning of the hair, increased bowel movement frequency, because everything's working too fast. Diagnosis, low TSH, but high T3, T4, causes big one, Graves' disease. We worry about toxic adenoma in surgery. Um, you can have anything else, including Hashimoto's thyroiditis. The trick with this is if you biopsy a patient or do surgery on a patient that is hyperthyroid, you can push them into thyroid storm and they can die. So these patients need to be managed before you do surgery or even a biopsy on them. Beta blockers, a uh, couple different medicines, and eventually surgery if you can't get it under control. Forgot about anatomy. Thyroid. Right here in your neck, the isthmus is the middle of the thyroid. There's a right lobe and a left lobe. And then on the side of the thyroid are parathyroids. You have a superior thyroid artery and an inferior thyroid artery. Um, the superior thyroid artery is the first branch off of the external carotid artery. That's what was dressed in a later date. Parathyroid, we'll get into that later. Sits anterior to the trachea. A goiter is an enlarged thyroid. It is usually caused by iodine deficiency or inflammation. We talked about the 1.5 centimeter nodule. We still use this term if they have an enlarged thyroid, even though it's not due to iodine deficiency. If someone comes in with a large nodule or a swollen gland, we will call that a multi-nodular goiter. Again, because they have multiple nodules, their thyroid is enlarged. It's not because of an iodine shortage. Now, let's say we got all this squared away, but we're still having issues. Let's talk about the surgical management of hypo and hyperthyroidism. As far as Graves' disease, surgery is indicated for patients with large goiters causing dysphagia or airway obstruction. Again, symptoms are good enough to have surgery of the thyroid. Non-functional thyroid nodules, especially if they're big, sometimes it's easier just to do surgery on them because, you, like I said, you can have one nodule on the right side or one nodule on the left that is causing symptoms. Or coexisting hyperparathyroid thyroidism is a reason in Graves' disease to do a thyroidectomy. It's kind of weird, but it makes sense. Fail medical treatment, which means they've tried to treat, you can't get it right, take the thyroid out, you have no more thyroid hormone that is being produced by your body, so we can give you the exact amount that you need. Makes it easier to treat these patients sometimes. Whether you do a total versus a subtotal, total is making sure you remove every piece of thyroid um, tissue, subtotal, usually means removing the bulk of it, leaving some around the parathyroid glands so that you don't risk them being hypocalcemic. Now, if someone has a toxic adenoma or a toxic goiter, surgery is also indicated. Large obstructive goiters needs to come out. Malignancies or hyperparathyroidism needs to come out. 
need for rapid correction of hyperthyroidism because they got something else going on, they're having to have surgery for something else or whatever, and you can't get it under control, surgery is an indication. For a total, a total thyroidectomy for toxic multinodular goiter is reasonable. But again, you got to make sure you try and get these patients under control before they go under anesthesia. Some people prefer ipsilateral lobectomy um, for a toxic adenoma. They're basically saying only the adenoma is bad, so they want to cut that adenoma out and leave the other side normal. The problem with a partial thyroidectomy or a lobectomy is you run the risk of having to do redo neck surgery. Redo neck surgery is always risky, especially to the recurrent laryngeal nerve. That's the one injury that we have to talk about anytime we do thyroid surgery or even parathyroid surgery because you can injure that nerve. Um, innervation of vocal cords um, and your overall neck. So patients that have an injury have a normal voice during the day and over time it gets weak because that vocal cord doesn't work like it's supposed to and they can have difficulty swallowing and aspirating because they can't close off their airway. More common if you have to do a total thyroidectomy, but if you're doing one side and because of that you have to come back and do the second side, the second side will be harder because you two-staged it. Um, so a lot of patients, if you have something like um, a large nodule or a toxic adenoma or a goiter but it's only one-sided, a lot of people will do a total thyroid for that and be done with it and not have to deal with it. Last but not least, we kind of talked about the algorithm. Go over it again. Someone comes in with a nodule, first thing you got to do is to a TSH level to make sure it's normal. High, normal, or low. If it's high, you got to get an ultrasound. If it's normal, kind of still have to get an ultrasound. Um, the main reason is you're trying to figure out if they have a mass or not. If they have a mass, on ultrasound and it looks benign, you can do serial follow-ups, again, 1.5 centimeters. If it looks abnormal or it's too large, FNA. If the FNA shows malignancy, surgery. You can get an ultrasound and it looks normal and they still want a biopsy, we'll still biopsy. One centimeter used to be the number, it's now 1.5. Anything less than a centimeter is hard to biopsy and guarantee that you're getting it. So even if you get a negative FNA for a small nodule, that doesn't mean it's negative. It means you just have neg you didn't get positive culture, I mean positive fine needle aspirations. Um, the other thing is very few people die from thyroid cancer. The majority of them are papillary thyroid cancers, then followed by follicular then medullary, then anaplastic. Anaplastic, everybody dies from it, but it's very rare. When you die from anaplastic thyroid cancer, it is quick. Medullary has some association with some different syndromes, so it's usually a familial thing, but a lot of these patients, because it's associated with a syndrome, they will get the thyroid out before they, it really even becomes an issue, so they'll have the thyroid out as a young child. As far as the average person walking around, if you get thyroid cancer, it's usually papillary, sometimes follicular, uh, which is a little more aggressive than papillary. Um, we also have uh, something called FLUS, follicular lesion of unknown significance. That used to be cancer and you get it out. It's now kind of, sometimes you can watch it or sometimes you can take it out to confirm that's what it is, but you necessarily don't have to do radioactive iodine treatment. Radioactive iodine treatment is reserved for patients that have thyroid um, cancer and we want to make sure that we burn out all of the thyroid cells so what we'll do is give them a radioactive iodine and locate those lesions burn those the radioactive iodine uptakes burns it out watch it for a couple of days and that's it that's another reason we talked about subtotal versus total thyroidectomy subtotal leaves a good bit of tissue and sometimes those patients have recurrence they have to have a recurrent neck operation to remove it because there's too much thyroid tissue remaining. Again, a redo neck puts the recurrent laryngeal nerve at risk. That's why we try to avoid it. Yes, it's a lot. Yes, it's confusing. The sum up is if someone walks into our office with a thyroid nozzle greater than 1.5, we will usually biopsy it. If it's big enough and they're causing symptoms, we still check a TSH, T3, T4, make sure they're not hyper or hypo, 
and then we either biopsy it or take it to the operating room. In the operating room, we take out the side that is affected, wait for our frozen section. If our frozen section says positive for cancer or suspicious for cancer, then we'll do a completion thyroidectomy. So basically remove both lobes at the same time, sparing the parathyroids. That's it. Talk about thyroid cancers a little bit, as well as parathyroid. Got any questions, give me a call, email me, text me, all that good stuff. Take care.